In a potential shift of policy, the American Secretary of State says the U.S. is ready to talk with North Korea without preconditions. Washington has been demanding Pyongyang give up its nuclear program before coming to the table. But Rex Tiller said now says that's just not realistic. Tillerson made wide-ranging remarks about the issue at a foreign policy forum. Let's just meet and let's, we can talk about the weather if you want. We can talk about whether it's going to be a square table or a round table if that's what you're excited about. <laughs> but can we at least sit down and, and see each other face to face? And then we can begin to lay out a map, a road map of what we might be willing to work towards. I don't think it's not realistic to say we're only going to talk if you come to the table ready to give up your program. Tillerson added that President Donald Trump is on the same page. Trump has come out in the past to contradict statements by his Secretary of State. China and Russia both reportedly welcomed Tillerson's comments about talks with Pyongyang. While Tillerson did present a softer stance, he also reiterated the U.S. will not accept a nuclear-armed North Korea. He called American military preparedness to respond to any threat strong. He also revealed details of preparations for a possible confrontation with Pyongyang. He said China is taking steps to prepare for a possible flood of North Korean refugees and said Washington and Beijing have discussed how the North nuclear weapons would be secured. But White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders released a statement shortly after Tillerson's comments. It says Trump's North Korea stance has not changed and asked that North Korea is acting in an unsafe way towards the entire world. The U.N. is also getting involved. A high-ranking U.N. official visited North Korea last week for talks. The U.N.'s political chief says both sides agreed on the importance of preventing war. Jeffrey Feltman was in Pyongyang for four days. His visit was the first by a U.N. political chief to North Korea in seven years. His visit included meetings with North Korea's foreign minister and vice foreign minister. Feltman spoke to reporters about his visit after briefing the U.N. Uh, Security evening. Council. He said North Korean officials did not directly Council commit to talks, but he added that the U.N. is willing to facilitate. But I think we've left the door ajar. And I fervently hope that the door to a negotiated solution will now be opened wide. Feldman said he raised the international community's concerns about North Korea's nuclear and missile programs and its hopes for a peaceful solution. He added that he believes this is the most important mission he has ever undertaken. North Korea's leader has pledged to strengthen his country's nuclear power both in quantity and quality. Kim Jong-un gave a speech on the closing day of a weapons industry conference. The Workers' Party newspaper published the text. Kim bragged about the country completing its quest to be a nuclear power state. He said it's developed strategic weapons, including hydrogen bombs and intercontinental ballistic missiles. He thanked scientists, technicians, and others in the arms industry for their death-defying struggle. Kim added the country will win in what he called the showdown with imperialists and the U.S. Pyongyang said last month it achieved its goal of being able to strike any part of the U.S. mainland with a nuclear-tipped missile. The U.S. and South Korea agreed the North launched an ICBM. However, experts have raised doubts it could carry a nuclear warhead. South Korea's president is starting a four-day visit to China. It's Moon Jae-in's first trip to the superpower since taking office in May. Moon has arrived in Beijing and will speak with President Xi Jinping on Thursday. The two are expected to discuss North Korea's nuclear and missile programs and the deployment of the American missile defense system in South Korea. Both oppose American military action against North Korea. They're expected to discuss how to resolve the issue through dialogue. But also high on the agenda are ways to improve bilateral ties, especially economic relations. 
They had cooled after Seoul deployed the THAAD missile defense system earlier this year. South Korea insists it was a response to increased missile tests by Pyongyang. But Beijing remains concerned it could track its own military activities. The talks will be held on the understanding South Korea won't deploy any additional interceptors. Ahead of the visit, Moon tried to offer a reassuring message through an interview with China's state-run CCTV. I heard many times from the U.S. that the third deployment is meant to defend South Korea from the North's nuclear and missile threats. We'll pay special attention to that, make sure the deployment doesn't go beyond the purpose of defense and doesn't harm Chinese security. Moon will later go to Chongqing, a major city in central China. He will focus on building South Korean economic ties there. Moon is traveling with more than 200 business people.